Home values appreciated by about 10% in 2020 and they're forecast to appreciate by about 5% this year. If you have a concern that we may be in another housing bubble like the one we experienced a decade ago, here are three reasons why this market is totally different. Hello everyone, Meryl Ibrahim here, Broker Associate with Coldwell Banker Realty in the beautiful Palm Beaches, Florida. If you've been here before, thank you and welcome back. If you're new to my channel and want to learn about lifestyles, communities and some real estate in South Florida, click on the subscribe button and bell so you'll be notified every time I make a new video. I am sure you have looked at other videos on YouTube about the housing bubble, a very hot and trending topic these days. And most of it is trending towards the doom and gloom of an impending housing bubble in 2021. Or is it just the sensationalism of how the topic is presented that drives so many people to watch these videos? Well, today I'm going to rely on hard data to tell you what you need to know and you decide if you think a housing bubble is imminent in 2021. But first, let's understand what is a housing bubble and the signs. A housing bubble is a condition where housing prices increase drastically as a direct result of demand. It starts with a surge in housing demand in a market where the inventory is limited. As prices start rising, speculators enter the market looking for high returns. If this trend of new demand and limited supply continues over time, it will result in the housing bubble bursting. This ends up causing a sharp decrease in prices in order to compensate for the glut of properties. Those who bought properties during the bubble and left struggling to pay their mortgages eventually ended up selling their homes below market value. Now that we know how a housing bubble starts and ends, let's look at three key points that distinguishes the housing bubble of 20, 2008 and the housing market today. Number one, the housing supply is extremely limited. As we know, the price of any market item is determined by supply and demand. If the supply is high and the demand is low, prices normally decrease. If supply is low and the demand is high, prices naturally increase. In real estate, supply and demand are measured in months supply of inventory, which is based on the current number of homes for sale compared to the number of buyers in the market. The normal month supply of inventory for the market is about six months. Anything above that defines a buyer's market, indicating prior prices will soften. Anything below that defines a seller's market in which prices normally appreciate. Between 2006 and 2008, the month's supply of inventory increased from over five months to 11 months. The month's supply was over seven months in 27 of those 36 months, yet home values continue to rise. Months inventory has been under five months for the last three years, under four for 13 of the last 14 months, under three for the last six months and currently stands at 1.9 months. That's why it's referred to as a historic low. So we need to remember if supply is low and demand is high, prices naturally increase. Number two, this time, housing demand is real. During the housing boom in the mid 2000s, people got caught up in the frenzy and bought houses based on an unrealistic belief that housing values would continue to escalate. The mortgage industry fed into this craziness 
by making mortgage money available to just about anyone. Let me take this one notch deeper to illustrate how this went down. The Mortgage Bankers Association publishes the Mortgage Credit Availability Index. The higher the index, the easier it is to get a mortgage. The lower the index, the more difficult it is to obtain one. Prior to the housing boom, the index stood just below 400. In 2006, the index hit an all-time high of over 868. Again, just about anyone could get a mortgage. Today, the index stands at 122.5, which is well below even the pre-boom level. In the current real estate market, demand is real and not fabricated. Millennials, this is the generation of people born between 1980 and 1998, and according to the National Association of Realtors, make up 37% of all home buyers in the US, the largest share of any generation, have come of age to marry and have children, which are two major drivers for home ownership. The health crisis is also challenging every household to redefine the meaning of home and to reevaluate whether their current home meets that new definition. This desire to own, coupled with historically low mortgage rates, makes purchasing a home today a strong, sound financial decision. Therefore, today's demand is very real. Remember, if supply is low and demand is high, prices naturally increase. Number three, this time households have plenty of equity. Again, during the housing boom, it wasn't just purchasers who got caught up in the frenzy. Existing homeowners started using their homes like an ATM machine. There was a wave of cash out refinances, which enabled homeowners to leverage the equity in their home. From 2005 through 2007, Americans pulled out $824 billion in equity. That left many homeowners with little or no equity in their homes at a critical time. As prices began to drop, some homeowners found themselves in a negative equity situation where the mortgage was higher than the value of their home. Many defaulted on their payments, which led to an avalanche of foreclosures. Today, the banks and the American people have demonstrated they learned a valuable lesson from the housing crisis a little over a decade ago. Cash out refinance volume over the last three years was less than a third of what it was compared to the three years leading up to the crash. This conservative approach has created levels of equity never seen before. According to the Census Bureau data, over 38% of owner-occupied housing units are owned free and clear without a mortgage. Also, Atom Data Solutions just released their fourth quarter 2020 US Home Equity Report, which revealed 17.8 million residential properties in the United States were considered equity rich, or about one in three of the 59 million mortgaged homes in the United States. If you combine the 38% of homes that are owned free and clear with the 18.7% of all homes that have at least 50% equity, you can take away from this that 56.7% of all homes in this country have a minimum of 50% equity. That's significantly better than the equity situation in 2008. The bottom line is this, this time housing supply is at a historic low. Demand is real and rightly motivated. Even if there were to be a drop in prices, homeowners have enough equity to be able to weather a dip in house values. This is nothing like 2008. In fact, it's the exact opposite. I hope those of you voicing concern that we may be in another housing bubble will find some assurance in the three reasons I have laid out that this is nothing like 2008. 
I hope you got something out of this video and if you did, please do me a favor, like and share because based on the algorithm, it actually gets more people to discover my work plus it also gets this information out there. Hit that subscribe button and the bell right next to it so you'll be notified of my new videos. I put out a new video every single week so you don't want to miss them. Hope you're having a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.